If there is no God, can there really be meaning to life? This is the debate we're about to dive into between Jordan B. Peterson and Susan Blackmore, who's an atheist. Now, one quick preface. If you know my channel, you'll know my take on Dr. Peterson. That is that he is a major, major force for good in the world, but that he has yet to come to a saving knowledge of God. He doesn't know God in a personal way. He's somewhere along that Christ-haunted pathway that C.S. Lewis walked in his years following his conversion. So we pray for Dr. Peterson. We hope that he sees, like Lewis did, that Jesus is the myth made real. With that being said, this clip gets very spicy toward the end because Dr. Peterson really calls her out on a very specific thing. It's a very telling thing. So let's go ahead and dive in. When horrible things happen to me, or I feel, or I read some terrible thing going on in the world, yes, those are tragedies going on in the world. Um, my response is, nothing matters. It's all empty and meaningless. This is how the world is. Get used to it. Get on with it, girl. That sounds like a very Zen Buddhist way of dealing I guess with, it, I with, guess it with is. Well, it's a, fun, it's a paradoxical way, though. It is the first, paradoxical. The first part of that is nihilistic and the second part isn't. So well, how do you reconcile those two things? It, which, Why get on with it, girl? Because, oh, oh, well, here's another thing. I've often done this with my students. Let's suppose you become nihilistic. Uh, nothing matters. There's no point in doing it. I mean, I think we live in a pointless universe. What are you going to do? And I say to them, like William James in his wonderful thing about getting up in the morning, um, but that's a slightly different point that he makes there. But I say to them, okay, tomorrow morning, when you wake up, think it's all pointless. I there's no point in doing anything. Now, what are you going to do? Well, actually, you're going to need to go to the loo. You're going to get out of bed and you're going to go to the bathroom. And when you're there, you'll think, well, actually, I'm hungry. I think, well, I think I want to go down to the kitchen. Oh, I probably should put my slippers on. Why don't I get dressed? You go and have something to eat. And then you think, I'm bored. And you go to university and go into your lectures. And, you know, we are not creatures who will just not do anything. To me, to go through that process, which I've done in the past a lot, and it's just natural now, is, um, is, a, is a very positive way of living to accept the meaningless and ultimate emptiness of everything and accept that this creature here, this thing, this evolved creature just will get on with life. But, but, but you're not accepting the meaninglessness of it, even by going through those actions that you, you described. You don't think so? Not well, at all, because you you're, that? because you're acting as if well, those things are meaningful. Yes, I am. I'm right. acting okay. as though those so things are meaningful. Are you pretending so that they're meaningful? Pardon? Are you pretending that they're meaningful? No, I'm not pretending. I'm, I'm, my way of putting it would be that those meanings are constructed by myself and others. They're personal and, and right. they're because, than, because but, the kind of creatures we are, because of the meme, meme But they're plexus, not constructed. Because, I'd like to hear Hunger isn't constructed. Neither is your desire to use the loo. None of that's constructed. No, no. But the fact that there is a loo <laughs> is part yes. of culture. Yes. Yeah, well, thank God for that. that. Yeah. 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 But see, oh, you see, thank God would you see, do that. Well, <laughs> sorry, that's a poor joke. Well, you see, <laughs> see so imagine this. You, you have the proximal meanings that you described that are sort of a priori, right? Yep. They're handed to you. You might consider them as needs or drives, although they're yes. not. They're personalities. It's not the right way of conceptualizing them. Um, but, but then there's the intermingling of all those needs and drives, let's say. And that, that constitutes a new layer of structure because it isn't just that you have to eat and that you have to use the washroom and that you have to have something to drink and that you have to be warm enough or cool enough to survive. It's that you have to do all those things at the same time in a situation where you're going to have to propagate that across time and you're going to have to do it with a bunch of other people. Yep. And it's always been like that. And yep. so what that means is that out of those proximal meanings, higher meanings arise. And you might say, well, those meanings are arbitrary. And I would think I those are religious meanings. I wouldn't meanings. say they are arbitrary, but I would say they were constructed. And it's very interesting. Reading well, your what book. What do you mean by constructed? Um, well, they are a consequence of, of mimetic evolution, of the, of the language that, that people are brought up in, the culture they live in, the arguments they have. I mean, What about the biology that they're given? Well, we start with the biology and the memes build on top of that. Now the memes are biology that. too. Well, by definition, they are, well... See, this I, is the I thing. Would, this I is would the follow thing. Dawkins in saying, well, talk about genes as biology, talk about memes as culture. That's all I meant by dividing that. But let me say this. Yeah, Re but I don't accept that division. But I, don't I want think to get back to what we're saying division. about meaning. Well, reading, reading your book made me think a lot about what, what you mean by meaning and your claim that we should have a meaningful life or strive for a meaningful life, that meaningfulness is important. And I kept asking myself, do I... Uh, do I live that way? What meanings does my life have? And, you know, if I think of something like, well, the, most of my striving goes into writing my books. <laughs> and is that meaningful? And again, I have the same response when I ask myself that question. 
It's just what this body does. It, it, then it, you should listen to the body and stop listening to the thing that's criticizing it. And what would the body say? It would say, write your book and try to be as clear as you yeah, possibly can about it. Yeah, that's what I do. It. And that's right, exactly, exactly what I do. That's exactly what I said at the beginning, is that the atheist types act out a religious structure and no, criticize it. No, no religious well, structure. Oh, let, we let come get, to this let big get, question let now. This question. Now, see, I like how he's calling her out on living in a way that her worldview actually does not support. People who claim to believe that everything is meaningless actually can't live that way. And that's important to expose because it reveals at a deeper level that no one actually believes in atheism. Not when you judge a tree by its fruit, not when you actually look at the lifestyle that someone lives, the way that they conduct themselves. No one lives like an atheist, even if you call yourself one. The reason you might call yourself an atheist is because you don't want to have to face a moral law giver. You don't want to have to deal with the implications that come along with there being a God, there being an authority that's higher than you. People want to be their own God in general. And only through the work of the Spirit, only through recognizing the need that we have for God, the need that we have to repent, the need that we have for the work that has been done on the cross, and only through someone being humble enough to, to be willing to meet God on his own terms is it possible to really understand um, God to begin with. So those are some of my quick thoughts on the clip. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this type of back and forth. I love seeing people with different perspectives kind of clashing in this way, but still it maintaining a level of grace and maturity. Thought it was a good conversation. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you guys in the next video.